This is Alicia, a brand new Mini ITX take on the legendary Amiga 1200. So, it's 2025 and we're building a new Amiga. And this isn't an FPGA based Amiga. It's an Amiga using real chipset. It's a Mini ITX A1200. How exciting is that? And I'm so lucky that Shu managed to get hold of one of these boards for me, as I think there's only 10 available at the moment and i'm one of those lucky owners to get one of the 10. i've been following this project for a while since i built the denise and actually saw this board as a prototype thanks to pcb way for sponsoring this video after a short word about our sponsor we'll crack on and get the box open and have a look at the project and start to see what we need to do even though it is a scary and exciting project at the same time let's crack on <laughs> If like me, you like building things, then make sure you pop along to PCB Way. They produce high quality custom PCBs perfect for replacement boards, prototypes, or even your own retro products. So once you've got your project you want to build, all you've got to do is simply click Add to Cart, which is this big green button on the right hand side. Once you've done that, you're presented with this new page here. Now it'll say here, we have detected two layer board at 45 by 51 etc depending on what board you got obviously that changes and as long as it says here 100 percent success you're all good to go now there is a hyperlink at the top here for simple tutorial which will give you some more information should you get lost now we do have some options we do need to set the first one being make sure you have the right country selected for your shipping cost so you can make sure you're paying the right amount of postage to get it to your country now you got the quantity here which is always set to five which is great because you've always got spares if things do actually go wrong on your build now also a couple of options down below which are worth looking at is here which is your solder mask color and also your silt screen color so your solder mask color is the color of the board the silt screen color is the color of the words on the board and last but not least down the bottom here you can have assembly service if you want to get this board built after you've done this you click the button here save to cart it will then be processed as you can see the color of boards is absolutely excellent and the quality is second to none. Great job, PCB way. So whether you're into repairing a retro classic or just building something brand new, PCB way is the way to go. So check out the link down below. And on that note, let's crack on. So about to begin this build, I have already printed the instructions. Now the instructions are full of useful information, particularly how to build the thing. And it says to start off with the SND stuff. So before all that, let's just have a look and do a quick unboxing. Just like so. And also along these sides here, we shall open this up. And what are we greeted with? Some pink paper so first of all there it is how exciting is that is the alicia 1200 board in all its glory we're just going to get it out of the bag most things are surface mount obviously you've got the stuff for lisa alice gail etc the surface mount memory there the two roms are high and low you've got the parallel a serial which are on headers a floppy drive port there these are headers for the leds on the case you've got a local bus here and a video port there as well now these are special sockets which allow you to put in the accelerators which sit over this way now here we will have a video port which acts as a vga port but also rgb port as well if you make the cables audio sockets here i think these two here are the two joystick ports and obviously a pcmcia here if i said that right i always get that algorithm wrong now i was going to build this on the heat plate like this but what i realize is it comes with a, quite a few little smd service components done and underneath there's a load of smd so i can't use the heat plate so it's going to be a matter of tinting up the pads and heating it with a heat gun and then placing the chips on the actual board itself. So back to the box. What do we have here? So here we have like a pin header one. And this one here is for the Amiga accelerators, etc. Or RTG cards, whatever you want to add, I think. We have some pre-programmed chips here. Adapter card and socket. So this would plug into the actual board to that other slot. 
and then that gives you the Amiga expansion slot there, I presume. Oh, it's actually giving me some sweets. Thank you again, Shu. And here, it's like a little note with a heart. Don't know what it is. Let's open it up. Is this something very fragile? Quite excited. What is it? Look at that. It's an Alicia badge. That's really made my day, that little badge has. So let's go on to the A1200 board and we'll see if we can recover the chipset hopefully in one piece. To start off with, we need to remove this chipset off this Amiga 1200 board. I think I'm gonna use a heat plate because I'm not bothered about this board and just heat the board up. We'll apply some flux and then we should be able to just pop them off and onto a mat to cool down. Well, that's the plan anyway. So watch me and see if this goes right or wrong. A little later. Now you can probably see there's quite a bit of smoke coming off this board now. Hopefully still not hot enough get these chips off well my plan didn't work too well I think that's all of it off that I need. So, I didn't take too long, did it? I did drop one chip, but it seems to have survived a fall. So I'm gonna let all this cool down and we'll crack on with the next stage. So we have the chips out here, which I have just recovered from the Amiga. So all bask in its glory of the AGA chipset. We have here Budgie that has got lots of little tiny pins. We have the 68020, which is the main processor and the main brain of the computer. So I think the next stage is to actually start populating the new board. In though it's gonna be exciting and scary at the same time. So let's crack on with getting that sorted. The very next evening. Plan today is to start building this and start populating the board. What I have done, just as a matter of precaution, is I've covered the underneath with captain tape, which is really good against heat. Saving these capacitors falling off if they do want to, because I don't want to be trying to find out where capacitors come from. What follows is a brief construction montage.
days later. So the turn on didn't go as expected. And now I have a problem. Now the problem is the CPU is getting really hot. And I know we've got a screen. All we got is a black screen. It doesn't boot to diagrams. It doesn't boot to normal ROMs. So I spent the night because I know I want to get this done. Probing around. And I think I found the issue. And I'll just show you what it is now on the oscilloscope. So we should have the oscilloscope up now. And I'm just going to apply some power to this board. Now I can't leave it on too long because like I say it was heating up. Now the problem I have is it should be one, two, three, four, five. There should be a clock, which there is. You can see there that is the seven megahertz clock. And there's also should be a clock here, which there is as well. So these two clocks here combine to make the 14 megahertz clock. But the clock should come out on this pin here and get this one and um, what's happening is it's just stuck high so to me because the clock stuck high from what I'm understanding after people telling me etc as helping me today is that's what's causing the CPU to warm up and get hot I put a thermal picture on there so you can see so I think that this budgie is faulty and that's why the machine isn't starting because obviously the CPU is not starting because there's no clock signal. So what I need to do, unfortunately, is to remove this budgie. I'm going to do that and I'll be back again. Now I ended up changing the Lisa here. Like I said, it's now got the HP one. And I also changed budgie here because of the weird clock problems. That wasn't really the issue. After messing around, it still didn't work. I was still getting the same issue where I was getting two 7 megahertz and I wasn't getting the 14 meg out. Many, many hours of resoldering, resoldering, resoldering. I even replaced Gale and Alice just to be certain. I resoldered the memory. I spent a lot of time resoldering and soldering. In fact, I got a hell of a lot of practice in, so that was actually good for me. Shu came on to help me. He was measuring signals on his board, etc., so we could compare. And he said, just send me a picture of your top and the bottom of the board. I thought, yeah great one i'll do that just in case he said just in case you forgot something i said i've not forgot anything i'm, I'm really good i followed the bomb sheet down to the last key although i did forget to order some parts as we always do anyway he came back to me straight away and said you missed something i went what and under here this little three-legged guy here i think he's like a three-legged transistor just by my finger there it's very hard to see i probably have to get it under the microscope but this here I'd missed and it was in my box and I put that on okay we're basically at the stage now where we're ready to power on it's the end of the week I've been working on this a hell of a lot it's been a lot of late nights etc it's dark outside again I'm probably going to end the video soon but we just want to try this now one more time after replacing that missing component is it going to work let's just shut these pins out here and we have a green light we've got flashing that's something better than we had last time or we had was a black screen and we've got the diagram loading that is absolutely brilliant now i do have stuff to build i'll be going through that next week and there'll be another video to follow now i know a lot of people want to see the t2 slot here and how it works so what i do i'll get that up in a minute and we'll just mock it up so you can see how it goes just so i can show you basically the way the cards sit. Next week I'm going to be putting these ports on etc. So let's quickly show you how this adapter works. So you have a slot on the board like so and then you have this board here and off this board here goes another connector. Can you see? So this little board will go under there then that would plug on like so allowing you to put your cards in this way just like so. So your accelerator cards would sit roughly about there. Can you see that? What a great idea that is. There's also a video port there, which I don't know what that's for. I think that's going to be for RGT cards, etc. But keep an eye out. Like I say, I don't know whether this pie would fit or whether it would work. It'd be good to try it, wouldn't it, afterwards? I don't know if it's been tested with a pie, so maybe I'm going to be the first. Don't forget to check out next week. It'll be next Monday again. There'll be another video on this, and we'll be getting into a case. We'll be finishing the build. We'll be running some software on it, playing some games, etc. So you can see how it performs in real world Amiga gaming, etc. Just before I go, I've got some thanks to say. I've got thanks to John from the Amiga Meet and also his friend for sorting me out with some ROMs. 
I can now program onto this. Hence why I've got the diagrams, because the ones I had here were just falling to pieces and the legs had fell off it. So they saved the day with that. Otherwise, this video might not have been. Thanks, of course, again to Shu for providing me with this board, but also helping me out with the diagnostics and sorting out the issues. He, he jumped online with me and we basically went together through some scope signals, etc. And also, and also thanks to the members of the Discord. There'll be a link down below to the Discord if you want to come along to the Alicia Discord. Somebody that helped me a lot was Jace1980. He gave me a lot of information, stuff I didn't know about the Amiga. Don't forget to hit the like button for this video because the more likes we get, the more this Alicia gets out into the Amiga world as well. Because everybody needs to know about these machines because they're absolutely brilliant don't forget to check out my youtube buddies down below We've got likes of captain commodore 8-bit retro refix they all do great things as well also down below is a link to our discord with youtube retro repairs where you can come along and speak to us all we're always there always hanging around on that note i shall see you next time on retro for you see you soon guys bye